This is California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento. We are joined by Marty Block, member of the California State Senate, coming off a remarkable year. SB 850 passed. That created the Block's Bachelor, as I call it. It's the four-year degrees at community colleges. I don't know how you're going to follow up with it, but you have something in which you want to follow up. Talk to us about SB 15. And I'm speaking not only to a state senator, but a Cal State professor and a Cal State dean. Right, and, and mm-hmm. Brad, it's always great to be with you. And thank you so much for the work you did to help us sure, last year yes, with SB yes. 15, SB 850. Right. This year, SB 15, easy to remember because the idea of SB 15 is to get students to take 15 units every semester oh. for four oh, years, oh, nice. and then they graduate with <laughs> nice. a four-year degree how'd in you, four years. How did you get that? Did it just drop properly, or did well, you ask for the number 15? You have to wait in line and make sure you hit it just right. <laughs> but you right. thought of that. Yes. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. So let's talk about completing your bachelor in four years. I was reading a study. I read studies. Yeah, I'm that guy. Only 19% earn their bachelor's in four years at most public institutions. At some of the more selective institutions, it's 36%. Both numbers seem low to me, sir. Yeah, and in the CSU, the California State University here in, in our state, it is about 18% who graduate in four years with who start as freshmen at the CSU. And and that's, looking back, 2009, those were the figures. And looking forward, in terms of predictions for those who start in 2013, it hasn't changed much. See, I would have thought it would have changed because, as you know, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever it was, I mean, you saw classes being slashed left, right, and center, and so it just became very difficult because you couldn't get your prereqs. You know as well as I that the governor has been quite generous, that voters have been quite generous as it relates to higher ed. Um, and so are we at a place right now where the classes are being offered that need to be offered? Well, unfortunately not. No. While, while we've got a very good budget this year, a big surplus right. for K-12 schools uh, you're right, and for actually, community colleges. Yeah, Prop 30 didn't deal with higher ed. It doesn't right, include yeah. higher ed. And yeah. Prop 98 that restricts how we spend about 40% of our budget money doesn't include higher ed. So we really haven't done enough as a state to fund higher education. So I don't blame the CSU. I frankly blame the legislature, and we've got limited resources from the taxpayers. So, you know, SB 850, very digestible. We knew what it was. Um, SB 15 taking, you know, no aspersions intended. But what does SB 15 do? What are the antidotes? It does several things to try to help a student get their four-year degree in just four years. Because we know if a student takes five or six or seven years to graduate, it costs them, if they go six years, an extra $110,000 when you include lost earnings to right. go to go six ah. years instead of four. So the things we do, we're going to pay for more faculty to teach okay. the bottleneck courses, the courses okay. that kids can't get and that delay their graduation. And we're going to start even before that with, with when a student first gets to school, they don't know for sure what they want to do when they grow up. We're going to pay for more career counselors to oh. help students decide early on what they want to do. And then more academic advisors to make sure students take the right courses to achieve their academic goals. Those three things together counselors, academic right. advisors, and more faculty should help. Let's ask about, uh, talk about faculty, because obviously faculty costs. Right. And I would hope that these are faculty that uh, could head towards tenure, mm-hmm. not adjunct. That's right. a whole other conversation, right. but uh, wait, from where does the funding derive to hire more faculty? Well, that's going to be the problem. We're, mm-hmm. we're hoping there is money available out of the general fund in this year's budget. It looks very tight for anything but K-12 and, and community colleges. And can I interrupt? Because... Yes. That is a source of frustration for some. Look, I completely understand why the governor has a soft spot for K-12. If you don't have a strong K-12, no one's going to college Mm -hmm. because they're not prepared. But at a certain level, sir, I mean, K-12, even K-14, it's all but restored to Mm pre-recession levels. I don't know if it's exactly restored, but all but. UCCSU, we are not restored to to pre-recession levels. So is it time to start turning our attention back to higher ed, despite Prop 30, despite Prop 98, whatever it may mean? Well, it is time to turn our attention to higher ed. Um, Prop 98, unfortunately, was a proposition passed by the voters of California. Right. And it says, it mandates that 40% of our budget must be spent on K-14 schools. So we, the legislature has no discretion, the governor has no discretion. Okay. Now, where there is discretion, the governor has been skeptical of funding higher ed. He says higher ed is not very efficient. And frankly, in California, it hasn't been. When students take six years to get their right. four-year degree, you're not being efficient. This bill, we're hoping the governor will like, 
because it does make higher education more efficient. What about, as part of SB 15, looking toward online education? Could that be a way? Look, I'm not one who would advocate to take several online courses. I do think there is something about being in the classroom that's critical. Mm -hmm. But couldn't, could it not be a couple bottleneck classes, as you described them, go online? Yeah, absolutely. Depending on the discipline, some classes lend themselves to online, some don't. Mm -hmm. We could certainly use that more effectively than we are. Um, there are also certain programs, scholarship programs and others that we have in the state right now that aren't as effective as they might be. Maybe we can take money out of those pots and put them toward SB 15. Could I ask you about the middle class scholarship? Sure. Because that is one that was passed with great fanfare a couple of years ago, but there is a discussion whether maybe the scholarship should be scaled back just a bit and have that money diverted back into UCCSU. And, and that may be ultimately the decision that's made. It will be the Speaker of the Assembly and the Pro Tem, the Leader of the Senate, and the Governor who will sit down and decide where to derive the funds to fund this important legislation. Now, in the background of all of this is that Committee of Two, right. which is Governor Brown and the Chancellor of the UC System, Janet Napolitano. And she has been very clear she'd like to see a tuition increase, 25% over five years. How does that committee structure of two play into SB 15? Uh, well, SB 15 rejects the 5% increase over five years, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, the UC is all right with that as long as the state substitutes money from the general fund. And what we're proposing in SB 15 would more than uh, substitute for what the percentage increase in tuition mm -hmm. would be. We think the state should pay, not, not have education be borne on the backs of the students. Um, but we've got to find the money. And I want to ask about the students. You know, I, I'm of the mind that there is something to be said uh, when you're looking at a student body that the body be diverse. And I don't necessarily mean ethnically diverse, although that's an attribute, but geographically diverse. You know, we live in California, and we're all Californians. Yes, it's a diverse state geographically, but there's been a lot of discussion about cutting out-of-state admission. And I understand we have to take care of Californians first. But if you're at an institution that is 90 or 95 percent Californian, I don't know if this, that student is well served. So I'm wondering if you can address that issue of kind of the, I'll call it the scapegoating of the out-of-state student. Well, this bill, SB 15, doesn't cut out-of-state students. It does charge them more. While it rejects the 5 percent increase for in-state students, it raises tuition by 17 percent for out-of-state students. Now, will that result in fewer out-of-state students coming to our schools? I'm not sure it will, because we'll still be cheaper than the state schools in Virginia and Michigan. Which are really and, the two that I would other. look at. Right. Um, so we still have many out-of-state students coming. What this bill does do then, that 17 percent increase will help to underwrite um, the tuition right. of many other in-state students. So where do you go from here? Obviously, very ambitious, lots of moving parts. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the Committee of Two, you have whatever's going on in the Assembly. Where do we go from well, here? Well, SB 15 passed in the Education ah, Committee in the Senate last mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. um, it passed unanimously, bipartisan vote. Really? Um, so it's got, it's got steam behind it. It does. Um, it's You're on a roll. <laughs> it's supported, as I said earlier, by the UC in concept. It's supported by the CSU. It's supported by the Association of Independent California Colleges and Universities like, like Stanford, USC, UOP, yeah, oh, okay. the small ones and oh, large okay. ones. Um, so we think we're, we're in good shape. People in concept, it's great policy. Mm. Whether the funding is there is the question, and we'll see as we move through the budget process. And remind me, from where do you expect to derive the funding? Is it just not clear? I mean, do we even know how much it will cost? What, what we're hoping, we don't know for sure how much it costs, and that pieces of it can be implemented independent of one another. So okay. once we know what kind of funding there is, we can decide which pieces come first. I see. Um, but it will make, it'll increase access for all California students because as students graduate in four years, that opens up space for community college well students, stated. for right. high school seniors. Um, it just makes the whole process flow more smoothly and we can save money in doing that and get students out paying taxes more quickly to reimburse the general fund. <laughs> well stated. He's Marty Block. He is a member of the California State Senate. My name is Brad Palmer. Thank you for joining us on California Edition from Sacramento, California.